Terrible triad involves, as rightly said by Dr. Argekar, it involves lateral collateral ligament tear, the radial head fracture, whether it is a single part, two part, multiple part, or an additional with either a capsular tear anteriorly or a coronoid fracture anteriorly. So these injuries, as history suggests, has been dealt with very in a conservative manner sometimes and in a very semi-open manner, partly fixed and all, and the results have been disastrous. Because the results have been disastrous, they have been told this whole set of injuries have been labelled as terrible triad. So, there are few things we, we, we need to concentrate on terrible triad. It's a very unstable configuration. Coronoid fracture, anterior capsular tear plus lateral ulnohumeral ligament should be reconstructed. It is predominantly a soft tissue injury. Radial head is just a reflection on X-ray. So those two ligaments have to be repaired compulsorily and very stably. The presence of radial head, whether it is fixed or replaced, makes the surgical constructs of the ligaments, whatever you have reconstructed of the ligaments, very stable. And there is no option of radial head excision. Stability of the construct has to be tested on table. If you find it is unstable, then certain steps have to be done. And the whole idea of doing the surgery is to mobilize the patient as early as possible. Otherwise, these injuries, they lead to terrible stiffness of the elbow. Dr. David Pug, in, 2000, in 2004, standardized a protocol into managing these injuries, which was called as Pug Protocol for Terrible Triad Injuries, wherein he had advised uh, fixation, of the, fixation or replacement of the radial head, fixation of the carotid uh, fracture if possible and ligamentous repair. In 2014, it was modified into called as modified PUK protocol which uh, Dr. Uh, Argekar has uh, mentioned. I will just run through this. If there is a tip of coronoid fracture, then you go in for an isolated lateral approach. And if you fail to fix the coronoid, then you go for a combined approach. Combined approach as in, suppose if you have a large coronoid fragment, then you approach it medially and rest of the terrible tire injury, you address it laterally. Once you have achieved a stable fixation after either replacing or fixing the radial head, that ends the procedure. If the still the elbow is unstable, then you reconstruct, uh, then you address the MCL. And if the elbow is still unstable, then you go in for a hinge the external fixator. Now the question arises, how frequently, how frequently we t are tempted to do a replacement of radial head because it's a very easy procedure, simple, easy procedure, fastly done. But is it right? Is it right to replace it or is it right to fix it? About the approaches, you may choose whatever approaches you like, Cockers, Boys, Kaplan's, has been discussed earlier. Before that, once you go in, you need to understand how the mechanism of injury has happened, how the tissues have failed. It's the lateral collateral ligament which has failed first, then you have a radial head fracture and then either the coronoid or the anterior capsule has been injured. So when you repair, you repair from the deeper tissues superficially. So you repair the, repair the coronoid first, then you address the radial head, either you replace or fix it. Raman. And then you... Raman. Please go to the, he has gone through all this, please go directly to radial head, fix or replace. Yeah, I am address, addressing to that. But he has repetition, right? Mm. Ah, directly to the So the sequence of repair, sequence of repair is as I, as I told you. Coronal fiction again will be taken up by uh, Dr. Prashant. Now radial head fractures, if there is single part fracture, then it has to be fixed with lax screw fixation. If it is less than three parts or around that, plates or screws. And if it is, you feel that it is unconstructible, then you replace the head. And the replaced head should be at least 0.9 millimeter proximal to the coronoid articular surface. And the two ways you can fix the head. In situ. In situ meaning on table, you are able to assemble all the fragments over the remaining part of the radius which is there. And the other is on table, on table as in you take out all the radial, uh, radial head, fix it on your table uh, operation trolley, assemble into a one block and then you fix it to the remaining part of the head. 
So this is the in situ method. This is the this is the on table method. Now the right side figure shows there's a one wider section of the radial head and there's a less wider section of the radial head. The wider section should face the radial notch. That that faces the radial notch which is on the ulna. That article is there. So you face it because you will not be knowing because everything is circular. You know don't know where to place it. So the wider section goes towards the radial notch and the outside part is the narrow part. So this is how intraoperatively you can see the radial head has been delivered with all the pieces. Multiple KY CC screws can be passed and a plate has been put. Now what are the safe zones? Where you are supposed to place the plate? In a mid-prone position, in a mid-prone position, you mark the point which is right facing you. Mark that point A. Then you completely prone it, uh, uh, prone it, and then you mark a point B. Then you completely supine it, then mark a point C. So you will have a point C which is anterior, point A which is posterior. In between 110 degrees is the area that we can fix. And the other way which you can calculate is, once you do that, then the intervening anterior, the, the A line that you have drawn and between the B and the C, anteriorly 65 degrees and posteriorly 45 degrees. That is 110 degree arc you have. So that is the area you place your plate and your implants. When all the attempts of reconstruct, reconstruction fail, then only you contemplate replacement. Now tips for radial head replacement. There are certain facts that you need to understand and overstuffing is just not done because that leads to early joint degeneration. And in a younger individual, if you develop joint degeneration, then there's nothing left but to replace the joint or to excise the radar and give him an unstable elbow. Understuffing, again that will lead to valgus instability. Instability in future, later on, will lead to stiffness. Intraoperative, you can judge it by, by seeing the uh, ulna humeral gap in the, and the plane of wherever you place the the, uh, the radial head, the plane should be at least 0.9 millimeter proximal to the, or at the tip of the coronoid. Now, how do you test for the instability? As you keep on, the, the point to consider is below the red line. After you fix it with radial, uh, plates or screws, you have a uh, hanging arm test. You suspend the arm, you are operating on a trolley, you pay, take a bed, uh, she, uh, roll of sheet under the arm and you suspend it like that. Once you suspend it, and if it subluxes it posteriorly, that means there is instability still there. If it is still subluxating, that means after doing LCL repair, that means the MCL also is torn. Address that. If it is still subluxing, then you do the external fixator, hinged external fixator. So what are the pros and cons of ORF? It preserves anatomy. There's a, it's a permanent solution, because then you don't have to visit the elbow again and again. And terrible tried in historically have been visited again and again and they have been known to operate again and again. The other thing is that suppose if you have a very vas avascular pieces of bone then it can lead to avascular necrosis, it can lead to implant failure if you are using a very flimsy implants or, or secondary dislocation if you have not addressed the stable portion of the fixation. Replacement, it gives immediate stability but then it can lead to loosening Anatomical mismatch is the biggest problem because our Indian capitulum is very small, our Indian radial head is very small and the implant that we get is slightly larger. So that there is a tremendous mismatch and possibility of arthrosis later on is very high. Okay, and of course it is slightly expensive. So these are few cases. This is 26 year old gentleman with a proximal ulna fracture also. We have plated both. The coronoid has been fixed with a anchor suture there. This is 32 year old. Now here again, in pediatric, how we fix the radial head by pass, pa passing uh, 10 nail. We have attempted this in a 32 year old young lady, but unfortunately she developed proximal synostosis. You can see there. Yeah. yeah it's not. Okay, okay. This is 42 year old male. Here again, it has been fixed by a hand module. A hand model, the plates are very flimsy. Here, the possibility of implant failure is high, but then we didn't have a choice on table. The 64-year-old lady, this was, this was replaced, but then she developed HO there. You can see this. But she had excellent range of movement, except for terminal supination restriction. 
Now, this is again a young individual, 42 year old. But if we fail to reconstruct, it was quietly, badly, very, very thin slice of radial head was there. We, were, we failed to reconstruct, so that is why we replaced. Now, this is a young 32 year old male. You can see the head actually delivering out. But we could manage it on table by doing a good, this is the, uh, the MRI. You can see the avulsion of the coronary ear, slight avulsion. And this is the radial head fracture there. See, the, the coronoid was fixed with a, you can see this, Akinka suture there. This is an AO plate, two months down the line. And here's a good, here's a good range of movement. Early mobilization helps a lot. You still yet to achieve complete pronation. Now, what does the literature say? Waters and Garrigues, in 2014, they conducted a study, fixation versus replacement. They found no difference in the clinical outcome measures between the two groups. Here, in the study, they have mentioned there, you can see in the last, arthrosis. In ORF, there is no arthrosis whatsoever. Whereas 63% of the patients operated with arthroplasty were arthritic later on. Lay and Ball, they still prefer to repair the native radial head, especially in younger patients, even though the complication and reoperation rate is higher than when radial head replacement is undertaken at the primary surgery. Ring was in favor of prosthetic replacement. And on table, this is a paper by Thomas Ruidi, a grand old man of AO. And his study in 2010 led to this conclusion that on table reconstruction leads to successful outcome. He has a very high success rate. Now, this is in meta analysis, meta analysis done in 2019 by Krykow and et al. They said comparable good results with good outcomes in terms of functional scores when you do a radial head replacement and uh, ORIF. So, we Raman, would suggest that... Raman, come to the conclusion. Yeah. The suggestion that they have conducted, they suggested is that replacement, when satisfactory fixation is achieved as a longevity of uh, reconstruction, sorry, we suggest that reconstruction will be performed when a satisfactory fixation can be achieved. Another, another meta-analysis in 2019, they are also of the same opinion that radial head replacement might be a more effective treatment approach with good clinical outcomes for patients with terrible triad. The take-home message is, always make an effort to construct the radial head even in multi-part fractures of radial head. When you are certain that the radial head is unconstructible, then only you replace the radial head. Thank you.